This is episode 26 of the Magic Detective Podcast. On this episode, I talk about Minerva, the queen of mystery. That and more on this episode of the Magic Detective Podcast. Welcome to the Magic Detective Podcast. I'm your host, Dean Carnegie. I am the Magic Detective, and this is episode 26 of the podcast. Today, I'll be talking about Minerva, the queen of mystery. Before we do that, however, I would like to uh, share a little bit of news with you. First off, uh, last week, I did an interview on WSMI Radio out of Illinois with host John Michael Marty. We discussed... Magic History, Houdini, my old buddy Steve Baker, uh, this podcast we talked about, and we talked about my career as well, and it was a lot of fun. We were supposed to be doing 20 minutes, a 20-minute spot, and we ended up doing 45 minutes, so had a great time. I want to thank John Michael Marty. Thank you kindly for having me on your show. I understand the episode will be turned into a podcast for WSMI Radio, so once that is done, I will let everybody know where you can hear the interview. So once again, thanks for uh, for having me on the show. Also, speaking of my show, The Magic Detective, you could follow me a couple different ways if you like. You can follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. On Instagram, just uh, type in The Magic Detective and you'll see my account come up. You can follow me there. Or on Facebook, my uh, account is facebook.com slash the magic detective and you can like the page and follow me there as well you'll find out more about uh, upcoming episodes when they come out or what you know you know what the future episodes will be so um you know some other magic history tidbits from time to time i also mention articles on my blog that don't always get mentioned on the podcast and blog by the way is themagicdetective.com that's where my blog is there's 700 or so articles on magic history there Usually, I try to do a companion article that goes along with the podcast. I don't always do it, but I try to do it as often as I can. And it's usually information that is in addition to the podcast. So you can always check that out whenever I'm, you know, whenever you hear a a podcast episode, go check out themagicdetective.com and see if there's anything additional over there. Usually, I try and mention it. Let me see, what else do we... Oh, right now, this very moment, the uh, Magic History Expo is happening up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I want to wish David Sandy and Bill Smith and everybody there a grand old time. I hope it's uh, very, very successful. I I understand they were close to selling out or they did sell out. So, wow, I wish I could be there. As I mentioned before, I'm a full-time performer, so I've got shows this whole week. So unfortunately, I was not able to attend, but hopefully next year when you do it again, I'll be able to attend that one. But I'm certainly with you there in spirit. One other thing before we get into the feature, just to let you know, I'll be taking a short break from the podcast over the next couple of weeks. I've got gigs that are out of state and I'll be on the road for a while, so uh I figured I'll just take the time off and then I'll come back uh, after the 4th of July holiday uh, and I'll have brand new podcasts then. But just so you know, there are 25 other episodes besides this one that you can listen to. That's over 15 hours of magic history chatter that you can enjoy. So uh, please check those out while I'm gone. One other thing, I'm going to save this bit of news until after the podcast uh, feature, so don't you know, don't just turn it off after I stop talking about Minerva. You're going to want to hear this one additional piece once I'm finished. So let's get into today's podcast. Minerva, the queen of mystery, was a female escape artist whose career seems to fall between 1904 and 1913. Her real name may have been Margarita Gertz van Dorn. I'm not 100% certain of this due to several different sources giving different names. In an interesting revelation by Hardeen in The Conjurer's Monthly Magazine, he states he met 
H.W. Snelling of Newcastle on Tyne, and he was surprised to learn Snelling's daughter was married to Vano, the handcuff expert, whose real name was Edward Van Dorn. This was in the December 1906 issue of The Conjurer's Monthly Magazine. So her maiden name was Snelling. So perhaps she was Margarita Snelling or at least Minerva Snelling. In the December 1909 issue of The Sphinx Magazine, it mentions that Minerva divorced her husband Vano on November 19, 1909 in Chicago. And taking this name game a step further, in July of 1908, Minerva was involved in a lawsuit, and her name is listed in the newspaper as Minerva Mina Rydell of Germany. Yeah, I have no idea where that one came from, but it's definitely Minerva Queen of Escapes that's involved in the lawsuit. Now, was this just another stage name? I have no idea. It was certainly a full year before her divorce. The U.S. Census records show her name listed as Minerva and her maiden name as Snelling. She was born in Germany, December 18, 1877. She was 20 the first time she married. In the Eau Claire Leader newspaper, February 17, 1910, she is mentioned in an article as being married to Professor Charles M.J. Hagerhaus. A later article, March 20, 1910, mentions that she married her manager, so this Charles Hagerhaus was her manager and her second husband. One of the keys to figuring out Minerva, the escape artist, is her first husband, Edward Vano, or real name Edward Van Dorn. I've been able to date his act as, as back as far as 1900. He's usually listed as a handcuff expert. At one point, he's doing a dual act as Vano and Anvo, the transatlantic wizards of handcuffs. This comes from the July 1900 issue of Mahatma magazine, and I'm curious who this Anvo might be. They're listed again in the May 1901 issue of Mahatma. Then in June 1903, there's a mention that Vano is moving to Coney Island. In a 1903 edition of The Sphinx, it says that Vano will appear in a new act called Vano the Mystery, and he will be assisted by Sadie Gibney, so no sign of Minerva yet although well, this is 1903. However, an ad in the Boston Post, May 25th, 1904, lists him as appearing at Austin and Stone's Museum as the Van Dorns, King and Queen of Handcuffs, so it's likely that Minerva is in the act at this point. And if you're not totally confused yet, try out this piece of information from the Cleveland Leader newspaper, September 27, 1905, that refers to them as the Vanos, William and his sister Minerva. Yeah, I don't get it. By September 1907, Minerva is appearing solo with her husband acting as manager. Her billing at this time was Minerva Vano, Queen of Handcuffs. It wouldn't be long before she dropped the last name Vano and just went by Minerva. And as we learned above, she would eventually drop Mr. Vano. There is a bit of excitement in July 1908 when Minerva is contracted to perform at the Maryland Park in Cumberland, Maryland. She's set to be paid $75 for the week. The manager of the park asks if she can add something sensational to help promote her appearance, which she doesn't get paid additionally for. She's handcuffed by the chief of police and jumped from the Blue Bridge into the Potomac River. The newspaper article, which features the jump, also points out that Minerva has escaped from 173 jails, 63 of which were in America. Now that sounds exciting, but it wasn't the excitement I was referring to. Apparently, on Wednesday of her week at Maryland Park, Mr. John Kirk, the park's manager, went to Minerva's hotel. Here is how the Cumberland Evening Times newspaper describes the event. Mr. Kirk came to the hotel and after some discussion with Mr. Johnstone, her assistant, came to her and using very insulting language, uh, but not complaining of the act, made a most insulting proposal which she resented. And warning him of arrest, he continued to insult her and walked away. He followed her and said, I'll fix you for this. Then on Thursday, she showed up at the park to fulfill her contract, but was prevented from doing so. She was told to go to the box office to pick up her money and leave, but they only paid her a portion of what she was owed. So she sued him. 
and Minerva won the lawsuit. Good for you, Minerva. The following month, Minerva appeared at Luna Park, D.C. in Arlington, Virginia. Now, I found this personally fascinating because I had never heard of Luna Park, D.C. Apparently, there was an amusement park in Arlington along Four Mile Run Road and was quite popular until it eventually burned down and was razzed in 1915. That's probably why I hadn't heard of it. While performing at Luna Park, Minerva also did a bridge jump. She jumped from the new highway bridge into the Potomac River at 5 p.m. on August 10, 1908. The newspaper account says that she may try to duplicate the feat later in the week, but instead of wearing handcuffs, she'd be put into a straitjacket and attempt the dive. But I couldn't find any report of that taking place. The Evening Journal recorded another of Minerva's stunts on August 24, 1908. The headline read, They couldn't drown Minerva. Handcuffed, she jumps into the Christian River. She was appearing at the Pickwick Theater, and to promote her appearances, she did a bridge jump escape in front of 10,000 spectators. The article says she was handcuffed and lifted to the bridge by two burly cops. She jumped into the water, and 22 seconds later, she was free and on her way back to the shore. But the article doesn't stop there. It then goes on to list various escapes for the coming week, much like Houdini would have done. In fact, this is right out of the Houdini playbook. The article says, On Monday, a skillful escape from the regulation straitjacket in full view of the audience. Tuesday, an escape made from a linen bag made of two ordinary sheets sewed together on a machine in full view of the audience. Wednesday, an escape from a United States mailbag or from the regulation hospital bed retainer. Thursday, an escape from a heavier and even more securely made packing case than the one used last week. Friday, the escape from handcuffs and shackles while underwater. This was the bridge jump. Saturday matinee, Minerva will repeat her paper bag escape of Friday evening, taking with her into the bag any child from the audience which can be secured. In late 1908, Minerva heads to England for a tour that would last 14 months, touring England and having a very successful run. While in England, she does handcuff bridge jumps, jail escapes, challenges, and finishes her act with a signature water-filled barrel escape. Now, this was similar in effect to Houdini's milk can escape, but used a wooden barrel instead. Her barrel was filled with water. Minerva would be heavily shackled and handcuffed when put into the barrel. And unlike the milk can where the performer had to crouch down in a sitting position, Minerva's barrel was large enough so she could stand. The lid was put on and eight padlocks secured the lid in place. A curtain was put in front and she would make her escape. This was the regular closer of her act. According to the Jarrett book, it was while Minerva was in England that she encountered the Houdini people. Her accusation is that they put acid into the water of her barrel and when she stepped inside she was badly burned. She stopped the escape immediately upon feeling the burning sensation. Now, I don't see any newspaper articles which refer to this or any other documentation other than Jarrett's account in the Jarrett book. By October 1909, Minerva is back in the United States presenting her act. Her name regularly appears in the Sphinx magazine as touring in the U.S. The article I mentioned earlier from 1910 where she marries her manager also states they were in Russia, but the way the article is written, it doesn't give the exact time they were in Russia, so it's possible this was 1910 or earlier. According to Jim Steinmeier in the Jarrett book, Minerva married Guy Jarrett sometime around 1913, so if all of this is correct, Jarrett is actually her third husband. Interestingly, Guy Jarrett's job is listed in the census records as dairy truck driver and in another record as a mechanic. Minerva's occupation is listed as none. She was in her mid-30s at this point when she married Jarrett and possibly was feeling too old to do the escape act. They remained married for seven years until she divorced him for abandonment. Sometime prior to 1930, she married George Backus. 
She remained married to him until his death in 1941. And then on February 22, 1955, she married for the fifth time to Louis Brisbane. Sadly, they were only married for a little over a month because Minerva passed away on March 27, 1955 in San Diego, California. She is buried with her fourth husband, George Backus, at the Mission City Memorial Park Cemetery in Santa Clara, California, section K3, number 26. She was 77 when she died. And one other sad note, she's not even listed on the gravestone. Her section is blank. And that, my friends, is a little bit about the life story of Minerva, the queen of handcuffs, the queen of mystery. Now, I mentioned earlier that I'd have something to add, and this is it. My friend Ron Pearson wrote a play about Minerva, and in January of uh, 2019, this year, they presented the play in Edmonton, Canada, and apparently it got really great reviews. Well, I just found out from Ron that this play on Minerva will take place again, this time at the Edmonton International Fringe Festival in August, August 16th through the 25th. Now, if you happen to be in Edmonton and you want to check it out, please go to their Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash queen of handcuffs to find out more information. I understand that they've hired a professional female escape artist to play the part of Minerva, and the story has something to do with Minerva and Houdini. So I believe it's uh, highly fictional, but there are historical uh, truths in there as well. So it sounds very exciting. I wish Ron all the best. So that's going to do it for this episode of the Magic Detective Podcast. I want to remind everybody, if you like the episode, please like the episode. If you're on iTunes, give us five stars. And please uh, leave a positive comment. That would be great. If you're on some other platform like Google Play or Stitcher or iHeartRadio in the podcast section, whatever, there's always a way to like the uh, podcast. So if you could do that. I'd really appreciate it. It always helps out the ranking of the show and lists us a little higher each week if you'll do that. Don't forget, I'm taking off a couple weeks, taking a short break from the podcast because I'll be on the road doing gigs. Until next time, I'm Dean Carnegie. I am the Magic Detective. I'll see you soon.